Now, it's always interesting to get some slanders. And you know my, um, my method is uh, a knot is a boost, as we say on Broadway, or as the Romans said, the ancient Romans, bona fama, mala fama, semper fama. Good fame, bad fame, it's all fame, and we're taking it. If I'm so inconsequential, why bother to attack me? Now, I have to mention that uh, some of the terpiloquium in, uh, in question comes from uh, Abby Martin. She's interviewed on uh, the website of, I believe, her brother, Robbie Martin. This is called MediaRoots.org. Uh, the podcast is called R.I.P. Breaking the Set. I guess it means Requiescat in uh, Pache. Uh, and uh, this is an amazing thing because Abby Martin says she approaches the question of the Crimea purely from the point of view of her own ratings and her own, uh, her own uh, uh, gate receipts, I guess we could say, her own uh, reputation. Um, so she says, uh, I was in a real bind on the Crimea, says Abby Martin. If I, uh, if I, if I went along with the uh, the Russian action, if I supported the Russian uh, repatriation of the Crimea, then uh, I would be viewed as a stooge of Putin, she says. And but if I if I was against it, then I would be uh, essentially bucking the, uh, the 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 wishes of the uh, the people running this. Uh, running this thing. So um, she's supposed to be a strong woman. So she says that she had to simply um, avoid the issue. Uh, I'm sorry. If you are given that kind of a podium, you've got to stand up for what is right, for the truth and for morality and for war avoidance. Right? These often converge. So uh, this is unacceptable to say, well, I, you know, you have to sympathize with me because I'm strong woman here, but at the same time, I can't I can't uh, face these issues on their own merit. Uh, and then she gets on to the fact saying uh, I, she didn't want to be total apologist for Putin. And she was then attacked by uh, a number of individuals, including Webster Tarpley, Paul Craig Roberts and Lou uh, Rockwell. Um, one, one wag has pointed to the fact that uh, this podcast, you have to brace yourself because this is a torrent of vile language, obscenity, filth, profanity, scatology, you name it. Uh, one wag has said that uh, since um, Howard Stern is now uh, moving away from his current employers, that there might be an opening there for a, uh, a female contributor capable of having a really foul mouth. So that seems to be uh, one side of it. Uh, we've also got the Fondation Jean Jaurès. This I regret because I think uh, I have tried, uh, in, in especially my programs of last, uh, last June and July, I have tried to do justice to Jean Jaurès, uh, a great European, a great fighter for peace, somebody who tried very hard to prevent World War I for happening, from happening, right? If we had had a Caillot Jean Jaurès government in Paris in 1914, instead of this Viviani being run by Poincaré, we might have uh, escaped with fewer disasters in the 20th century. But uh, they, uh, they now are writing about uh, the question of conspiracy theory. They insist on calling me a conspiracy theorist. I think this is not accurate. If you note what I do, I have a program, I have an organizing perspective, I'm trying to build an organization, I have a strategy, uh, and this is not, uh, this is absolutely not the same as the various paranoid libertarian uh, websites that are so easy to find. Anyway, a research note of the Fondation Jean Jaurès, and of course this was a socialist party leader who was assassinated a couple of days before France declared war in World War I. Uh, we're told the conspiracy intellectuals are North Americans. Particular mention is made of Webster Tarpley, and then there's a list of others. Um, along with their European counterparts, they form a kind of international 
the Conspiracy International, to which Thierry, Thierry Maison, president of the Voltaire Network, tried to give a concrete form in November 2005 in Brussels, bringing together an anti-imperialist conference, Axis for Peace, uh, which is a who's who of conspiracy authors. Well, again, as a historian, I'm not out to find conspiracies. What I'm trying to do is find out what actually happened as um, you know, various historians have said, the task of history is to describe uh, was eigentlich geschah, what actually happened, wie es eigentlich gewesen ist, what actually happened there. Um, and it's not the question of conspiracy. The problem is, when you're dealing with oligarchical social formations, such as the U.S. today, the characteristic method of oligarchical operation is through Pre-concert, as Abraham Lincoln called it. Remember that by their, the measure of these characters from Jean Jaurès, and I've, I, you can read about this in my uh, book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror Made in USA, go back to Bernard Balin's book on the ideology of the American Revolution, and you will see that the central element is the idea that there was a continuing social effort, conspiracy if you want, uh, that meant that uh, the uh, British oligarchy was determined to wipe out the liberties of the North American colonies. This can be traced back to Edmund Burke, of all people, that a lot of left liberals even, uh, and conservatives and all kinds of people would, would embrace today. But then if you then go back to uh, John Adams, go back to George Washington, go back to... Um, any number of others, Look, go back to the Declaration of Independence, and you will see that the Jeffersonian text of the, of the U.S. Declaration of Independence adumbrates what? A conspiracy theory. He has, he has, he has, and when this train of abuse is pursued through many governments by different people, when you add that up, you have to conclude that there is a uh, a deep institutional commitment. And remember also that Lincoln's House Divided speech essentially says when you see people like Franklin Pierce, when you see uh, people like Stephen Douglas and Roger Taney, Taney of the Supreme Court and others, when you see them bring the component parts of a structure together and somehow it all meshes and matches and fits together, well, then you have to conclude Pre-concert. Pre-concert is the term used by uh, Lincoln. There's also the question of the Polk, James Knox Polk, and his intrigue to start the Mexican War, right, which is also done at the level of such pre-concert. So uh, I reject this notion of conspiracy theorist. There may be some on their list who do qualify as conspiracy theorists. If you don't have a program, if you don't have an organizing perspective, if you're not doing anything organizationally, well, then maybe maybe that, uh, that shoe might fit. But uh, in my case, uh, no. Uh, so um, that's our program for today, World Crisis Radio for the 13th of March. And uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to write a letter of a letter to Reverend Pinckney and uh, join us in the fighting against the 47 tyrants, traitors, and impeach Scalia. And don't forget, arrest McCain for ISIS, also relevant, back in one week.